Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, you know, last month or two, I've actually had a good run of stock photo sales. And um, I thought I'd uh, put some up, talk about uh, talk about the photographs and uh, a little bit about the equipment uh, used for each photograph. Um, and if uh, people are interested in doing um, editorial stock, it's, it's mostly what I do is editorial stock for what's called the secondary editorial stock photography market. So secondary editorial means it's not um, primary news. In other words, it's not news that's happening right, like right now, but it is editorial. And so there is a large market for uh, photographs that illustrate certain things. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of these images and then I will be back uh, with a follow-up. Leading off here, uh, it's a good idea when you uh, get a new piece of technology, a new device, uh, to take photos of it in action. So here is an Apple Watch and uh, it's in the process of measuring heartbeat. So um, we shot uh, a few different versions of these. This one sold. It didn't make a whole lot. It was uh, not even $5, but it's the kind of thing that will probably get used over and over again. Uh, so uh, that will add up. And I shot this with the Lumix G9 and the Leica 12-60. to I shot this in 2005 with a Canon PowerShot Pro 1. And if you don't know what the camera is, actually Gordon Lang at Camera Labs has a uh, video up of a uh, retrospective review. Um, but that was a pretty fancy uh, advanced compact. It actually had the only L lens that Canon put in a compact. Anyway, I was walking down in downtown Chicago. I forget what building this is they're constructing, but... Um, I looked up and saw them lowering that uh, porta potty onto the roof. And uh, the first thing that went through my mind was, I hope they looked inside before they lifted it. <laughs> and it licensed for $50. Bear in mind, I only get 40% of that. And this is a still life of an extension cord with a North American style uh, plug. Um, this is evergreen content because this style of plug isn't going away. And extension cords make made today look just like this one that I photographed in 2004 with a Canon 10D and uh, the original EF 100mm macro lens. Now it is, of course, a uh, 6 megapixel image. But of course now with um, modern upsizing methods that use AI like uh, the Enhance and Super Resolution feature in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, um, that's not much of an issue. This image recently licensed uh, for a gross of $25. Here's an image from 2010, uh, the Forest Park, Illinois, St. Patrick's Day Parade. And uh, there's police department SWAT unit uh, in that parade. Uh, unfortunately, that parade kicks off at around noon, so you're dealing with really harsh light. This was shot with a Rebel XSI and the kit 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And you can see from that hot spot on the officer's forehead that uh, CMOS chips back in those days uh, didn't have quite the dynamic range that they do now. This image licensed recently for textbook use for $105. Not too shabby in these days. Here's an image that I uh, shot in 2011 uh, of a, the ice groomer at the uh, McCormick Ice Rink in Millennium Park. That is the Cloud Gate uh, sculpture in the background, otherwise known as the Bean. Shot this with a 5D Mark II and the original 24-105L. to And uh, no, that's not a Zamboni. That is an Olympia, which I didn't even know um, there was such a thing until uh, I saw it on that rink. And the image licensed for $49.99 for website use. Here's an image from 2012 of Rush University Medical Center in Chicago. This is uh, their new building, or was their new, brand new building back then. Um, rather unique looking. Sh I shot this with the Canon 60D and the Sigma 17-50mm to f2.8 
lens. And I got to tell you, that was actually one of the sharpest zoom lenses I ever had. Um, just a amazingly sharp lens. Uh, had a bit of chromatic aberration you had to watch out for. Anyway, this license for a whole $5 for worldwide uh, website use and some other uses as well. And sometimes there seems to be no rhyme or reason on uh, what the license fee is and what the usage is. Here's a shot that I took on an actual stock shoot uh, in a research building and uh, just grabbed this uh, fire extinguisher sign uh, with a Canon 5D Mark III and the uh, Canon 100mm uh, macro, uh, the EFL version. Um, and uh, you never know what might sell. I took this with a Canon 60D and the Sigma 18 to 250mm lens. It was an okay lens. It had some problems in some areas. Uh, but this is uh, where a uh, bike path pa crosses a busy busy almost highway and so it's a good idea to uh, for a cyclist to stop uh, they've updated it now they put in like uh, flashing lights and a button on each side so you can uh, if you're a cyclist or walking you can hit that button and uh, lights start flashing and actually the drivers are very good about stopping so I actually I do need to get a, a new shot of that the license fee for this shot was $22 and nature shots sometimes sell. So this is a shot of a hop hornbeam tree, and uh, it's a hop hornbeam because its fruit looks like uh, hops uh, that you put in beer. Shot this with a Canon 5D Mark III and the 70 to 300 millimeter L Canon lens. Um, so it's really important when you're doing something like this to put in both the common name and the scientific name of the uh, plant that you're shooting. Unfortunately, this licensed for only a whole $5.02. And, and here's another nature image. Um, this actually licensed for a whole $3.95 as an artist reference. So I guess somebody's going to paint this. This is actually not even half an hour, maybe half an hour from where I live, and I live outside Chicago. So what is Bald Cypress Swamp doing here? Uh, evidently the Civilian Conservation Corps planted a bunch of these in a uh, wetland area, and uh, now they're pretty big. But it's a little touch of the Deep South uh, in Cook County. And I photographed it with a Canon SL1, uh, the Rebel, and a uh, kit 18 to 55 STM lens. This one from my business travel days, the Ernest Morial Convention Center in New Orleans, um, taken with the Lumix GX85 and 12 to 32 millimeter kit lens. Um, but uh, when I traveled, I generally carried a small camera. I'm not sure I would do that anymore considering how good my iPhone 12 Pro Max is. Um, but this licensed for uh, a whole five dollars. I was walking around downtown Chicago and uh, heard some noise, went to find out what it was and uh, discovered these hotel workers on strike. So labor actions, things like that are a really good uh, subject for stock. And um, I shot this with a GX85 and the 12 to 32 millimeter uh, kit lens. Uh, license for $89, so uh, keep your eyes open and ears open for these sorts of photographs. Here's another uh, Lumix GX85 12-32mm uh, to 32 millimeter kit zoom image. That, that really was a good, good lens. Uh, but this is an area of the Chicago Riverwalk known as the River Theater, and on a summer day people will sit here and read, uh, have coffee. Um, so, uh, you know, these sorts of scenes are, are useful. This is licensed for $40. There's another uh, more uh, newsworthy reportage type image. Um, there was a demonstration in Millennium Park. You have this gentleman uh, holding up his sign in front of the bean. And you can see reflected in the bean they had a die off. Uh, so there were people lying on the ground illustrating the dangers of um, climate change which we're all already experiencing. Anyway, shot this with the uh, G9, 
and the Leica 12 to 60. And it licensed for $40. Now, if you watched my first video on stock images that sell, this image should look familiar to you because a similar to it, um, that I took probably right before or right after, was used by the National Geographic. Well, this one was used by, I'm guessing, a particular travel site because the license fee was under $5. Um, but this was taken with the G9 and the 12 to 35 millimeter Lumix F2.8. So it's not uncommon for an image or a similar to license after the original license to somebody else because, you know, people read, they'll see an image and think, uh, oh, that, I, I could use that. So uh, sometimes thing, these things feed off of each other. This image um, sold, actually sold last year, and the reason I'm including it is because um, it just illustrates that you do not need to have extraordinarily fancy equipment to do stock photography. I shot this with a little Canon PowerShot G16. Um, it's a little 12 megapixel, 1 over 1.7 inch sensor camera, but um, they had a very good sensor for that size and a very good lens. Uh, and essentially, uh, it was a nice camera to have around uh, with me all the time. So um, right uh, when the COVID vaccine came out, uh, the Cook County Health Department had uh, outdoor vaccine clinics uh, around the county, and there was one in downtown Oak Park, and I happened to be down there and saw it and grabbed this photo. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a plain Jane photo, but it licensed for $125. So it's not a bad idea to have a small camera with you um, to if, if you're interested in doing this type of stock photography. So that last image uh, was taken with a, uh, with a for its time, the, a very good uh, advanced compact point and shoot camera, the, the PowerShot G16. Now, just to clarify, um, my stock, the stock agency I use is Alamy, and if you're using other agencies, you have to make sure that you're using the equipment um, that they prefer you to use. Alamy used to keep a list. <clears throat> they used to keep this uh, two lists, suitable cameras and unsuitable cameras. They no longer do that. Um, so you are in danger of submitting images from a camera that's not suitable without knowing it, and they will reject those images. And I think what happened is it just became too much of uh, an effort to continually check all the new cameras coming out and uh, deciding whether those cameras uh, are suitable or unsuitable for stock photography. But there are some um, general rules that you can use to determine whether your equipment is, is good enough for Alamy. Um, and that doesn't mean it's good enough for other agencies. Probably is. If, if you're shooting micro four thirds and up as far as sensor size, so APS-C, full frame, you shouldn't have a problem with any stock agency. But again, you need to check. Um, as a general rule, if you're going to use a small camera, a point and shoot style camera, um, you want to use a camera with a one inch sensor or larger. So that would be the Sony RX line, the Canon G7, G5X line, the Lumix LX10. The LX100, of course, has a micro four thirds uh, sensor in it. So that's not a problem. Where there's a problem is if you're trying to use a point and shoot uh, or a super zoom camera that has a one over two thirds inch sensor, uh, because that's a really tiny sensor that's uh, about the same size as most phone sensors. And it just doesn't have the quality that a, an agency like Alamy is looking for. So cameras that fall into that category. The Lumix FZ300, I see a lot of people raving about that little super zoom camera. Uh, on on uh, online, but uh, it's not going to be at the level that you need to be uh, to submit for stock. Same for the Canon super, the little Canon super zooms. 
Um, you know, check your camera sensor size. It's easy enough to look that up online and just make sure it's large enough to do what you want to do. Alamy will not take uh, cell phone images through their regular uh, submission channel. Uh, they have an app called Stockamo, which is iPhone only, and you can download it to your iPhone, and you can submit iPhone images from any iPhone, really, um, which will be sold through Alamy. It will be on the regular Alamy page. It will have information on it saying, hey, this is from a phone. It may not be up to the quality of other images. Of course, now with phones like the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the iPhone 13 Pros, which have a main camera with a larger sensor, those uh, those those cameras are uh, really close to the level where they could go. I, in my opinion, they could go through the regular channel. I don't expect Alamy will change that. Um, there is sort of a gatekeeper, I think, mentality uh, about having things set up. So I mean, they want people who know what they're doing to be submitting images. If you enjoy photography and you keep a camera with you and you're out and about, you know, you're going to see things that'll work for sock and um, it might be something that you want to try. Now, as I've said before, you're not going to make a lot of money at this. You know, this last few months, I've made a few hundred dollars each month, which is cool. Um, so it's enough to make it worthwhile, I think, continuing to do it now. But... Um, it's very hard to make that your main source of income. So hopefully uh, this was helpful to you. If it was, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, if you have any uh, questions or comments, opinions, leave them down below. I'll respond. And go out, have fun, shoot. I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time.